uh, what do you think of consequence? Nearly all the bombs are dropping in the, in the proper target area. That night, 250 bombers returned. The burning docks and warehouses an unmistakable marker. But Goering's change of tactics relieved the pressure. Fighter Command regrouped. London burned. After the raid on September the 7th, many rescue workers and firemen worked 40 hours non-stop. Most of us had the wind up to start with, one of them said, but you looked around and saw the rest doing their job. September the 15th, the Luftwaffe mounted another major daylight attack, expecting no opposition. But this time, the Spitfires and Hurricanes were waiting for them. That day, September the 15th, 56 German planes were shot down. Britain had retained command of the air by day. The Royal Air Force had won the Battle of Britain. September 1940. Now there were no more daylight raids and there could be no invasion before the spring. But Britain's cities became targets for the night bomber. For 76 nights in succession, London was bombed. Queuing for shelter at dusk became an orderly ritual. The evening alert, the dawn all clear, part of London is live. I used to hear the planes come over every night. No matter what shelter you went in, there was always someone there who would provide the entertainment 
to sort of take away the strain. The underground stations, it was decided, must not be used as shelters, but people simply took them over, and the authorities had to accept the fact. Well, we was all singing, we was all happy, just like there was no war at all. There was a canteen there, and I used to sing as well for the people and cheer all the people up when the bombs was going. But Until one night it was very bad, and I was just under the seat and praying for the big guns to start. For 76 mornings, rescue squads dug through rubble searching for survivors. A bomb dropped on a block of flats, about four storeys, and it took the whole front out. And they said, there's an old chap up there, he won't go in the shelter. So we go up, and when we got up there, there's an old chap there snoring his head off, with about 20 empty bottles round his bed, and the bed's nearly out in the street, <laughs> and he never woke up then. We saw this dear old lady sort of staggering around and we said, come on, well, you'll have to come out. And she came out and all she got was just a half of a, what well, should have been a, a night dress. And I said, no, you'll have to put something on, make yourself a bit decent. Now she was about 80 old, and she was completely in the daze. So she said, oh, I'll go in and get something. And she came out and she got her hat on. People somehow got to work through a nightmare of upended buses, cratered roads, bombed railways. London calling in the overseas service. Radio reporters told America and the world that London could take it. The spirit of Londoners won sympathy and help, but the United States remained neutral. While Britain stood alone from September 1940 to May 1941, 40,000 people were killed in raids, half of them Londoners. Hundreds of thousands of people were homeless, eating, living, sleeping in rest centres. Clothing and everything else had vanished with their home, but not morale. To be clean. And you see these funny little notices put up outside a door. You see, and this was the sort of thing that really made you think that there was something in it. And the more you saw it, the more you felt encouraged to be able to go out and you knew that once you, you'd gone out to go on to a job, your family were left behind, you always felt that somehow, all right, well, the Joneses or the Smiths up the road, if anything happens at home, they'll look after them.